G'day folks, off well, tonight's equipment autopsy we have a PCM from a Holden Commodore uh, sedan slash wagon pretty much a generic item uh, as you can see that's the code on there if you want to google any of that code it's for a 3.8 litre uh, Buick V6 in a Australian made Holden generic domestic car and we're going to open it up and see what happens inside it. Pretty sure this PCM does everything since it says automatic uh, and engine control. So it'll have the automatic transmission control and engine, whatever. That one there's the other one that I grabbed out of another wreck. It doesn't say what it's for, it's missing. But again, apart from the colour of the plugs, it all looks pretty much identical. That one there is something Brad gave me a while ago. It's a Toyota one. This one's dead. It holds the injectors wide open no matter what you do and just floods the engine. So this one's going to get 40, 50 volts put across it or at least the, the arc welder. <laughs> this one here probably die to the arc welder as well. But this one, we're going to open it up first and see what happens inside it. <clears throat> It's more educational that way than simply trying to burn a hole through the casing and burn the rest of it to the ground. Hmm, surface mounted. It's got a conformal coating on it too. It's like silicon or something like that. Lots of screws. Okay, that's the chip by the looks of it. Oh, something in there. Yeah, it's an IC socket. Oops. Yep, that has a EEPROM or something like that in there. CXWL1938 Hmm Programmable Programmable ROM chip And that's your performance control too That's why companies make so much money selling chips for cars You get something like this in the mail, plug it in and away you go That's the chip a lot of the rices will say, chip your car, make it faster. Yeah, I'd rather upgrade things like exhaust and other crap. <laughs> so, that's the board. The whole thing is dipped in this rubbery conformal coating. You get various names on the chips. Most of these are probably custom or custom programmed. Korea. Hmm. Yeah, a lot of these ICs and transistors have been fairly well scrubbed or at least
potted to the point where you can't really make out the markings. I tried scrubbing that one off and I lost most of the markings. But you can see a couple there. It's all to do with transmission programming, ignition and injection programming and trigger, that sort of thing. Or modern electronic crap. I'm not a big fan of modern stuff, or at least, at least not in cars. If you get a problem in a car like this, well, you gotta send this thing off for rebuild or throw it in the bin. As frustrating as they can be, sometimes carburetor based cars can be a bit of a lifesaver at times, at least you've got a chance of fixing them on the side of the road. If this thing dies, well, you're on a tow truck. So, that's a bit of a look at a uh, VT Calais uh, Holden Commodore VT Calais PCM. Not too sure what that big cap's for, but again, no legible markings. Or oh, RV, sorry, it's like a MOV or something. Hmm. Anyway, generic, well, Asian made for Australian car stuff. Got to love outsourcing. Not that I'd expect them to make this sort of stuff in Australia anymore. It's not often you find Australian made electronics, especially not this detail and componentry level. Anyway, thanks for watching. Well, I guess since I'll probably get sick of looking at this and throw it in the rubbish bin, I might as well open it up. I could take an arc welder to it and just burn it in half, but I don't know, I've got plenty of other things to do that too. So, yeah. That backing's just a uh, chassis mounting. Was it polyamide and glass fibre, so nylon with glass fibre in it. Crap. Plastics. I'll open this up a quick way. Both of these cars were automatics, 3.8 VT, so there shouldn't be any difference in theory. <laughs> Plugs are different colours compared with that. So who knows? I can already see there's a hatch on the casing missing for the chip. Pretty much, no they're not the same. These big SMD resistors are up here in this case. They're a little bit different. Maybe one was a V8, I don't know. Because there's two engine choices, a V8 and a v or V6. So, I don't really know. They're definitely both VT chassis. It's completely different, if not more simplified. That's a v, VT V6 Auto Trans. Maybe the other one was a manual. Not really sure. I still have six of these things, which seem to probably trigger the uh, six injectors. And these little transistors have turned into these multi packs. There's three big multi-pin packs and two smaller ones. RV1 still there and RV2. As you can see on that board, they're both still there. Maybe this is a later model one.
can't even read that. Bloody find a number on this thing, but the potting compound is not making it easy. Top number is 185 0938 Bottom row is KKB59033. That's just for that one. Let's see what this little bastard has on it. It's a Delco 169J 16214851. Delco must be getting them custom programmed or custom made. The numbers and the markings are barely legible even before they put the bloody coating on them. Afterwards, you can't read them. That's a Delco 109J 16214851. Again, barely legible. But these ones here are 42827, made in Singapore. And that's a 55199, again, made in Singapore. It must be custom ICs. Don't know. I'd say most of this stuff's custom. One lonely electrolytic capacitor. <laughs> 50 volt, 82 microfarad. 82 microfarad. It's an odd, odd rating. I've never seen that before. Hmm. Yeah. Australian cars, you never know what you'll find in them. I guess that's the other brain of another VT Commodore. It's interesting they're both completely different. Maybe that one was a manual transmission variant. Don't know. The cars were completely stripped out and half crushed. I barely managed to get that unit out intact. This one here was just sitting in the passenger footwell. This one I had to actually peel the bloody plastics and everything away and unbolt it. So, this one here could have even come out of a different car, but by the looks of it and by the looks of the markings on the case, it's actually out of the car that I found it in. Yeah, interesting. They're well coated, there's no corrosion or anything like that in them, and they probably worked quite fine. But since it was a wrecker that got rid of them, obviously you didn't value them that much. This sort of stuff probably isn't worth jack shit. Or pretty much anything Commodore or Ford Falcon. It's just a dime a dozen. You can find it anywhere for virtually nothing. So that's the end of that one. Thanks for watching.